guys, I'm Hendo, and today I'm making the Filter of Love based on the potion from Dungeons & Dragons. This video is for the prompt version, but if you're looking for the drinkable cocktail, you can follow this link or the one down below. This video will have three parts. First, I'm going to cover the lore behind this potion, as well as its effects and potential uses. In part two, I'll cover the ingredients and potential recipe. I'm going to pull from aspects of D&D, as well as symbolism throughout pop culture, history, and literature. And in part three, I'll cover how to actually make the prop. So if you want to skip ahead to any of those parts, you can find the timestamps right here. So now let's get started. The Filter of Love is an uncommon potion that gives you the effect of Charmed. Within 10 minutes of drinking the potion, you become charmed by the first creature you see. For one hour, you can't attack this creature, and it has advantage against you on all ability checks relating to interacting with you socially. Use of this item really depends on how you roleplay, since it doesn't describe what kind of love you feel for that creature. It could be puppy love like Brock feels for every female character ever. <laughs> <laughs> Or it could be protective and caring the way that the snow golem cares for that firewolf pup in Adventure Time. <laughs> I think this is a really interesting way to RP it too, since it technically says creature and not necessarily humanoid. And that episode is so cute. There's also that overwhelming romantic love, like in Titanic, where somebody literally froze to death in order to save the other creature. Or maybe it's your manic type love, like Toga feels for Deku and My Hero. <laughs> or maybe two characters are already in love and kind of just need the extra push to get there, like Jim and Pam. Then it's a date. But however you decide to RP it, the important thing to remember is that you've absolutely fallen for this creature and you would never do anything to harm it. I think the most common uses for the filter of love is to get an NPC to either give you something or help you out with something, or just to prank your party. I actually read one thread where somebody mixed a healing potion and a love potion and then gave it to a party member that was being kind of difficult. And then later when they were in combat, that character drank the potion to heal himself and then accidentally fell in love with the creature he was fighting. And I think almost died or something, but it was kind of to teach the party member a lesson in a way that was still kind of fun. Use the filter of love responsibly. Now let's get to making it. Since D&D doesn't have an official recipe for this potion, I'm going to pull from Xanthar's guide, as well as the blog of holding, the herbalism and alchemy guide, as well as some witch blogs. And this is the recipe I came up with. First, we'll need a rose. Sorry, little buddy, we're going to need your romantic properties. Obviously, roses are hella romantic and they show up everywhere. We have Beauty and the Beast, we have Shakespeare, and for some reason, I always think of Pebble and the Penguin because the girl penguin, like, has a rose on her head despite it being the middle of Antarctica, but that's how you know she's the love interest. There's actually even a druid spell in D&D called Reign of Roses that sickens all evil creatures. That's the power of roses and love. Okay. It smells nice. Since I think the filter of love is a little bit wicked, I think it makes sense to add some sinister ingredients too. So I'm actually also going to strip this rose of its thorns. There are like a zillion quotes about roses and thorns and how that relates to the hardship that accompanies love. I think my favorite one is that we can either despair because roses have thorns, or we can rejoice because thorns have roses. Rain is also a super common symbol used in love stories. I think it often signifies the transition from hardship to everything working out. You know, it has like the really famous scene in the notebook. Ugh. And actually my favorite rain sequence is in Bambi. It's like the whole forest is super pretty and like being rained on and everything's like taking shelter and the music's pretty. There are lots of kinds of love. You don't, you don't have to just have the hots for somebody. The next ingredient is a pomegranate seed. Since I think the filter of love is usually taken non-consensually, I think that it makes sense to have a pomegranate seed be part of this potion recipe. In the story of Persephone and Hades, Hades gives Persephone some pomegranate seeds and she becomes tied to spend time with him in the underworld because of it. The main ingredient in this potion is succubus or incubus blood. A succubus presents female and an incubus presents male. A succubus is a dead sexy fiend that can shapeshift, charm you, and bond with you telepathically. It can fly, it can do a pretty gnarly claw attack, and it's resistant to a lot of things. But its challenge rating isn't very high and it tends to be an early level boss. 
So I'm gonna add one more difficult ingredient to round out this recipe. This last ingredient isn't from D&D, but I think it would be really easy to incorporate in game. It's actually from Avatar The Last Airbender. In this greatest series of all time, Aang hears about the panda lily, which is a romantic flower that grows on the top of a volcano and is used to show your affection for a lady. He actually goes all the way up to the top of a volcano to grab one, but then finds out that the volcano is going to blow and destroy the entire town, and maybe the fortune teller doesn't really know what she's talking about, but he goes and says everything, and it's fine, and maybe she wasn't technically wrong after all. But I think it's really cute flair, and it actually has a real-life counterpart. There's a flower called the Edelweiss, and it grows on these super sheer cliffs up in the Swiss Alps. Legend has it that really brave men would go up and try and fetch one, and then bring it back down and show it to a woman. And this would be a symbol of not only their dedication to her, but also of their bravery for scaling the cliffs. So I'm going to take the panda lily and just let it simmer on top. Since all of the other ingredients are pretty easy to find, I think it makes sense to have two of the ingredients be a little more difficult to find. For a campaign, I think it would be neat to have the players go up to a volcano to retrieve the lily, and then maybe a succubus or incubus appears. But anyway, the last bit of flair is going to be to stir the potion only in the heart shape. So yeah, that's the recipe. Of course, I'm not actually going to use this mixture in my potion prop because it's, it's kind of a hot mess. It smells nice, but it's... But with all of this lore and mythology in mind, I'm going to make a super sweet, rosy potion prop. Now it's time to build our prop. I've decided on this cheesy heart-shaped bottle because it's a love potion, so I want it to be in your face about it. Since D&D describes this potion as having a little heart-shaped bubble, I'm going to make one too, but I want mine to light up. So the first thing I'm going to do is cast a little heart. I'm using a two-part clear epoxy resin and adding a little bit of glitter since I want it to be translucent but not completely transparent. I'm doing a bottom layer first for safety since I don't want the LED to sink all the way to the front. It'll be much harder to diffuse the light that way. So once that layer's dry, I'm going to go ahead and add my LED. You can wire your circuit to your LED first, or you can do it after, totally up to your preference. I'm going to hook the little legs of my LED onto a piece of wire so that it stays in place. Then adding more glittery resin and letting it cure overnight. This is going to be a very basic LED circuit. First, I have a white LED. The long side is the positive side, and the short one is the negative side. If I match these up to a battery, it'll light up. Yay! Science! Now that I'm sure the LED works, I'm going to add some clear case circuit wire to the ends. And this is going to feed up to the battery case. I want the case to be hidden in the cork, so I'm outlining it and hollowing out the cork just a little bit so it fits nicely. In the very center, I'm making a hole so that the wire can go through the center. As long as this part of the cork is towards the back, I don't think anyone will see it and it'll still be easy to change the battery. You can also get a coin battery case that has a switch built in, but I already had these so I'm just going to go with what I have. I don't mind just taking the battery out when I don't need to use it. So now we're going to connect the case and the LED. I want the positive end of my LED to match the positive end of the case. On this case, there are two prongs for the positive, but we're only going to use one. The negative side only has one prong, so that makes it much easier. You could solidify this connection with just a bit of tape, but that's pretty difficult, so I am going to solder my connection. All I need is a soldering iron, solder, and a little helping hand. That's what the little metal thing is called. It's called a helping hand! That's so cute! Make sure that you don't have any bare connections on your wire. I'm not sure if the liquid will kind of interrupt that, but also if those parts touch, it will completely destroy your circuit. I've covered my connections in clear tape and used a little bit of heat to shrink the tape down to the wire. Make sure that you dangle your LED into the bottle so that you know how long the wire needs to be. Then go ahead and connect it to the case. You'll also notice that I'm doing this connection through the cork. I definitely messed that up the first time. And you could just cut a hole in the cork, but I really wanted this to be clean, so I just wired it over again. Now that my circuit is nice and functional, I'm going to go ahead and add some hot glue to the back of the LED. This is just going to provide some extra security against the liquid. And might as well add some glitter for good measure. I'm also adding a layer of cork on top to hide the battery case. A little bit of super glue should do it. While my heart was curing, I also got to work decorating the bottle. I'm starting off with a translucent kind of ribbon around the neck. Then I'm adding a bright pink velvet ribbon on top. Tying an actual bow is a little bit too bulky, so I'm just gonna fake it with some super glue. And this turned out quite a bit neater. To spice things up a little bit, I'm adding this arrow button through the knot. I just snapped the backing off and slid it right in there. Next, I'm decorating the bottom with more velvet ribbon and adding a gem ribbon on top. I also decided to super glue some crystals on there. The super glue does interact with the glass and creates a sort of frosty look. So if you're looking for something more clean, I would suggest a different adhesive. But I don't mind this effect, so I'm just gonna go ahead with a quick super glue. And now a test fit for how my LED heart looks inside. That looks pretty neat! Finally, I'm gonna fill the bottle with a rosy liquid. I originally tried dyeing baby oil with what I thought was an oil-based dye, but that didn't work out so great. 
And since I was streaming, one of my Twitch members actually suggested that I use Herbal Essence since that shampoo is already pink. That was a brilliant idea, but I couldn't find any at the market, so I just went with some pink hand soap. Originally, I tried layering two different colors to create a sort of ombre effect, but they were different brands, so they interacted kind of weirdly. I ended up dumping that out and just going with the rosy pink hand soap. My LED did hold up pretty well, but it wasn't quite as visible as I wanted. So I took it out, dried it off, and I'm adding a little bit of white acrylic to the edges so that it really pops. Boom, looking good. And now it's time to seal the cork with a little bit of super glue. And voila, we have a filter of love. Now you have a sickeningly sweet, cute little filter of love potion. You can spice up your LARP, cosplay, or D&D session. If you want to see how to make a drinkable version of this love potion, you can check out the link up in the corner or down below. And to see more pictures of this potion and my outfit, you can check out my social media platforms or Patreon. Thanks for joining me through this journey. If you make one yourself, please tag me so that I can see and share. Next month, I'll be making the potion of water breathing, but if you have any other ideas for potions or just want to tell me about your D&D session, let me know down in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay crafty. Kirby and I also want to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> You're so silly. Thank you. Thanks. She was not being chill during this video. <laughs> You're so scuttly. Mm hmm I love you. That's my ear. That's my elf ear. Oh, you want the key. Ah! <laughs>